All right, let's recap what we just saw. Proteins are a whole bunch of what's hooked together. A whole bunch of amino acids. Many, many, many. How many? Well, approximately uh, 100 or so for small proteins on up to 400 or more, sometimes many, many more for large proteins. And so what about this amino acid thing here? Well, amino acids, as we saw, have a central carbon with four bonds. What's attached? Well, I put an H there that represents one what? One hydrogen atom? Yeah. And I've got this group right here. And uh, that's called a what? It's called a carboxyl group with how many atoms? Carboxyl group. It has four atoms, one, two, three, four. And uh, over this way, there is the amino group. And so, um, the amino group, which has how many atoms? It has three. Amino group. All right. And so, everything we have drawn so far is the same for all amino acids. What amino acids have in common? What makes one amino acid different from another? It is what is attached right here, which is called the R group. What is the R group? Well, it's something. It's something. It could be uh, something fairly complicated or something fairly simple. Uh, we looked at a couple fairly complicated ones uh, in your book. And we're going to talk about one of those, but uh, uh, I am only going to ask you to learn one R group. It's the very simplest R group, and it's the one belonging to the simplest amino acid, of course. And what is that? Well, let me erase this and put the simplest amino, I represent the simplest amino acid. And so, the name of the simplest amino acid is glycine. We're going to see its, form, its uh, symbol GLY, its abbreviation GLY shortly. And glycine, like all amino acids, has the central carbon, the hydrogen, the carboxyl group, and the amino group. But what makes glycine glycine is what is attached right here. And what is that? It is the simplest R group you can possibly imagine. It is, it is one what? One hydrogen atom. Well, can't get any simpler than that. So if by any chance I was to ask you how many atoms in a glycine molecule, what would you tell me? Hmm. Count them real quick and see if you get what I do. Hmm. I think there's how many? Ten, right? Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have ten atoms in a glycine molecule. Fact is, I have right here a uh, model of a, a glycine molecule. Let's see if we can figure out what's what on this little model. Uh, well, I think this right here would be the central carbon. And, uh, and what's attached to it is one hydrogen atom. What is this part sticking out of my hand right here, right now? What is this part sticking out of my hand? Uh, that would be, um, what do we have up here? I bet it's the carboxyl group, is it not? A carbon atom, a double bond, isn't that cute how we do a double bond there? And a single bond to an oxygen hydrogen group. And on the other side, what is this right here? This is, uh, gee, what would that be? I think we have on the board behind me. That would be what? The amino group, right? Why is that blue? Ooh, it's a different element than we've worked with before. And blue must stand for, in this model set, for what? Nitrogen. So, two hydrogen atoms and a nitrogen atom. And so what makes this a glycine as opposed to some other kind? Well, I think because of what's right here. And that is the R group for glycine, uh, which is what? one measly little hydrogen atom. So I have ten atoms joined together, or represented being joined together, and this represents one glycine molecule. Now, 
uh, before we quit, let's think about the R group for tyrosine. Tyrosine. That was the strangest sort of picture in your book. Um, and it had uh, it had a CH2. I'll start from the top. How can we represent that in the type of ball and stick diagrams we've been doing? What is a CH2? Well, that would be uh, that could be kind of represented like that. Is that right? And then what was there in that drawing? You can be looking at it. This strange looking diamond thing here. And there's an OH down there. Well, we already sort of know what belongs where in this diagram. What did we say earlier? Uh, excuse me. There has been something's missing where there should be something. We saw this before. What goes there? What atom is missing? The macromolecules of life are molecules of what? Carbon. And so there should be a carbon atom, carbon atom, carbon atom, carbon atom, carbon atom, carbon atom. But are we finished? Not quite. Because every carbon atom has uh, how many bonds to neighboring atoms? Four. Let's look at this first one. Does it have four bonds with neighboring atoms? One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, it's all set. What about this one? Does it have all four bonds with neighboring atoms? No, it just has how many? One, two, three. So we need another one. And a hydrogen would be right there. You say, how do you know it's a hydrogen? Let's see, in this kind of molecule, it's either hydrogen or an oxygen hydrogen. They put the oxygen hydrogen there. And so for the same reason, we have a hydrogen there, a hydrogen there, and a hydrogen there. Now one thing I forgot to do before starting this video is getting out my tyrosine uh, model. And so let me grab that real quick. Here it is. Now this isn't actually tyrosine what I have here. This represents the R group of tyrosine. And so we see the six carbon atoms. We see some double bonding. We see the oxygen atoms. Here's the, ooh, I lost, uh, no, here, we're good. We got the two uh, CH2 carbon atom. We got the two hydrogen atoms. And we've got this oxygen hydrogen group at the bottom. And so I could take what I showed you before this uh, this little glycine model and I could transform it into a tyrosine molecule by doing what? I just pulled off one poor little hydrogen there and now I'm sticking on this big monster right here so this would represent one tyrosine molecule. Now do you have to know tyrosine? No, but I wanted to refresh our memory on the fact that on this chemical shorthand at these intersections when you don't see anything you know it's a what? You know it's a carbon atom. All right, that uh, I think recaps this. Uh, back to your lesson.